All right, listen, we can't let you go without talking a little bit about Bitcoin. You said when you first wrote about it, you were critical of it. Um, you are critical of the wider crypto industry. We're a Bitcoin only podcast. We very rarely talk about anything else. Um, we're obviously proponents and, and supporters of Bitcoin, but kind of where are you at with it now? Because obviously you've been become more exposed to it by the fact you've got an audience that comes to you who are Bitcoiners. Like, where are you guys with it now? Yeah, so let's take a step back and, and start with where I'm sure you and, you and I and Danny all agree, um, which is there is a need for uh, insuring against the debasement of fiat currencies. Um, I think that government spending and government printing is out of control. Uh, I, uh, a big proponent of gold, and I think in the rationale for gold and Bitcoin, there's an awful lot of overlap in the Venn diagram. Um, and I think as an asset um, amongst the digital currencies, um, if we were to buy one, it would be Bitcoin. Um, if. We are no, if we were to buy one, yeah. And we might. I had a conversation with Lynn Alden about it, that if, you know, if the crypto um, world explodes to the point where it drags down the price of Bitcoin to a, a, an attractive enough level, I would toss a few percent of my net worth towards it. Um, and I jokingly said to her when I had that private conversation that me just asking you how to buy it might mark a bottom. Um, because I'm, I was getting ready for much lower prices. Um, this was shortly after the uh, FTX, you know, SBF uh, implosion occurred. Um, and so... Um, Sorry, just ahead. to jump in. What's an, what's an attractive price for you? Uh, I told her that I'd be a buyer at 5000 uh, And when would you be a seller? Oh, I would just buy and hold. So um, I should explain my personal investing philosophy. Um, we earn money and, and, and we transact in fiat because that's, you know, we're law-abiding citizens and that's the way the world works and it's convenient. Um, we save money by buying real assets like gold and land and collectibles. And then we invest privately where we could affect the outcome with our own skills and network. And we sort of call that sweat alpha. Um, we, we don't speculate in the stock market, um, but we do save um, by buying real assets. And if we were to buy Bitcoin, that would be an allocation um, where in that category of allocation that we would make it. We would never buy crypto. We think all crypto are Ponzi's. Um, to the extent that Bitcoin is an asset, and Bitcoin does have some useful properties. Um, I just don't know how it'll ever be. Our, our, critics, our critique of Bitcoin has always been twofold. One, um, the regulatory regime will not allow it, and they will crack down on it, and it will be used um, as a bridge to central bank digital currencies, which we think are a surveillance nightmare. Um, and then two, that the price of Bitcoin uh, was being artificially manipulated by the crypto world vis-a-vis -vis Tether and, and other stable coins. Um, and we think that a bottom won't be in for Bitcoin until the Tether situation is resolved. And um, that's why I was talking to Lynn about learning how to actually buy and store it, you know, in my own hard wallet or cold wallet or whatever you guys call it. Um, but I, I understand the, the attractiveness of it. And I understand that the Bitcoin network itself is a pretty interesting phenomenon and the decentralization of of it is attractive to me. I just don't think the government's going to let me spend it. And look what they did in Canada. You know, we wrote a piece um, called "Just Watch Me" that that wrote that roasted um, Justin Trudeau, who I think is the is the intellectual weak link uh, of of a pretty pathetic set of leaders in the G7 today, as it stands. Um, but the first thing they did was they you know slapped uh, sanctions on these wallets that were donating to uh, to the Bitcoin crowd. I think the sanctioning of Tornado Cash is a real troubling sign. We wrote a piece on that. Uh, but hold well. on, the, the Canadian government also sanctioned donations which were made Correct. in fiat as well. Exactly. It wasn't just Bitcoin. Is, right, but when it mattered, you couldn't spend your Bitcoin, <laughs> right? And so the whole point is that like, you still have to operate within society and it's up. Our, our sort of, I had a great conversation with Marty Bent on this. Um, you know, uh, ultimately money is what the government says it is. And so the solution to our money problems isn't a new currency, it's a new government. Um, this is probably where we, we disagree a little bit. Uh, it's hard for us to envision where you could legally use Bitcoin as a currency in the U.S. if the government didn't want you to, um, which is what we saw in Canada in a very small, a very small way. But like, look at how they sanctioned Tornado Cash, right? Um, yes, Tornado Cash is used for money laundering, but there are also legitimate uses for it, like wanting to make a private donation that can't be traced back to your main assets. Um, criminals use highways. We wouldn't tear up a highway just because criminals happen to use it, but they sanctioned a piece of software. Um, which we think was a very dangerous precedent as well. So, but back to Bitcoin, um, <clears throat> when Tether is resolved and Binance is resolved and Bitfinex is resolved and all of this is sort of washed away, that's when we think 
the bottom of this sort of secular bear market in Bitcoin will be in. And that's a point where we would make a multiple percent allocation of our net worth and stick it in a safe somewhere and give it to our children someday, like the gold coins they'll get when I die as well. Huh. Uh, what if what if we are at the bottom though, and you miss it? Then I will have missed it. Yeah, you know, I'm not. You know, I, this is why I don't play in the stock market. I'm not good at predicting prices. Um, so, so what what is your fear with Tether? Because this is a rumor that's come up for years and years and years. I just think that the this is the part where I perhaps disagree with with many in the Bitcoin community um, to not acknowledge that this phenomenon is affecting the price of Bitcoin, or that there is an awful lot of red flags uh, around the organization. I mean, you know, the biggest user of it was Sam bankman fried right? Literally. Um, and so um, I simply don't believe that they have the assets they claim to have to back the stablecoin that they've issued, on, in contrast to Circle, who I do believe, and USDC. Um, and I do put, we made a prediction in our sort of uh, year in review for our pro tier um, that when the dust settles, USDC will be the stablecoin of choice in the digital currency world, and it'll be fully approved you know, by the US authorities uh, for that purpose. Um, I don't believe Tether's story. Um, I don't believe Binance's story. I don't believe Bitfinex's story. So I think they're all going to get washed out. And once they do, the price of Bitcoin will be a real price, in my view. Um, and if it's up from here, great, congratulations. And if it's down from here, interesting, it might be a buying opportunity. Hmm. Um, so... But I think the failure to acknowledge the cancer of Tether um, is to the detriment of the Bitcoin community. Uh, many people that I respect on almost all other issues have a different view than me, and that's fine. By the way, it's totally fine that it's, you and I could disagree on. So like you said with Alex Epstein, like I, I don't agree with everything that he says, but he's intelligent. He expresses his views politely, and mm -hmm. he makes me think. Uh, and those are three wonderful attributes of any human, and I'm happy to talk to Alex anytime and happy to talk to most polite Bitcoin uh, proponents as well, because I found many of them to be intelligent, to have strongly held views that they express politely, and that's fine.